Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Farrow. Good morning, Mr. Hanson. And to my right is none other than the star of the show, Jimmy Farrow. Hey, yo. Yesterday we had Lanny Poffo in. Thursday we had Coco Beware. And it just keeps getting better as we have none other than Hall of Famer, WWE, WCW, New Japan. The list is just too long and it's too early in the morning to tell it. Stan Hansen. Mr. Hansen, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm doing good. Great to be here. Uh, great to have you. How was your flight in? It was good. Uh, it, you know, it was raining last night when I came in, but uh, yeah, good flight. Yeah, there's nothing worse than raining. So I'm going to let that have the Pharaoh have at you, okay? Ooh, Go right. ahead, Mr. Pharaoh. Well, off to the races, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce our esteemed guest, born August 29th, 1949, yeah. John Stanley Hanson nice. II. Born in Knox City, Texas. Current residence, supposedly, Waco, Texas. Waco? Yeah, Waco. Is, well, is that true, said, Waco? That's what it says here, but, you know. Well, you know. Subject to change. I, I, I did subject live there change, about or? nine years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was My just... son went to Baylor, so I moved there. Okay. All right. Four children. Uh, career, of course, under the build name of Stan Hansen, six foot four, three twenty one. Nice. Uh, I'm not messing with that. Build from Borger, Borger, Texas, of course. Uh, trained by Dory Funk, Dory Funk Jr., Terry Funk. Debut January first, nineteen seventy three. Retired January twenty eighth, two thousand one. Oh boy, here we go with the resume, folks. Hold on to your horses. Worldwide Wrestling Federation, 1976, 1980, New Japan Pro Wrestling, 1980, 81, 1990. All Japan Pro Wrestling, 81 to 90. American Wrestling Association, Tractor Not Included, 1985 to 1986. Tractor Not Included. <laughs> World Championship Wrestling, 1990 to 91. Okay, how about the belts, folks? How many belts are we talking here? Oh my God, really, really, bro? Really, bro? Uh, listen, we only got a, right. we only got an well, hour. Let so. me see what I can I can try to pull the meat out here. There's a of several in, N, NWA international titles, but what I see here though, PWF World Heavyweight Championship four times over in Japan. That's a that's as big as it gets. Uh, PWF World Tag Team Championship four times, uh, holding it with Bruiser Brody, two times with Ted DiBiase, one time with Austin Idol, another huge, huge accomplishment, Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship four, four times? Oh my God. Uh, World Tag Team uh, tourneys over there are very, very important. Uh, he's won these eight times. Terry Gordy. Oh, yeah, I can't even... Oh my God, this list is very long. Ted DiBiase was also one of the folks that he won the titles with. As we move on, I know he's a former AWA World Heavyweight Champion, obviously. Um, CWA International Champion. See, Stan, you could have ate your sandwich during this whole yeah, thing, he bro. Could've, he could have had yeah, we, sandwiches. So if anyone doesn't know, we he cut the video have. because Mr. Hansen didn't and have I'm, breakfast, so we wanted to give him time to have some quick breakfast. But right. he could have just sat through yeah. this whole thing and just yeah. had a full course <laughs> meal, actually. Yeah, hitting the guy with the lariat, in the, <laughs> being forced to wait for the Red Square for the meal, that's a little rough. Uh -huh. uh, NWA Georgia Heavyweight Champion. We loved Georgia Championship Wrestling. Yeah. Two, two times. Uh, a tag team champion in Georgia with the, the great Tommy Wildfire Rich two times and only Anderson, Mid-Atlantic, United States Heavyweight Championship, uh, World Tag Team Championship, Mid-Atlantic version with Ole. Uh, then there's NWA Tag Team Championships. Can't you, can't you just say he just won everything and let's well, just you know what? it it's getting, But you know what? I did a pretty good job. I think we've gotten yeah. the main meat. And of course, the most important thing of all, if I can get to that, because I know it's here. I just want to make sure I got the date right. But the WWE Hall of Fame, was that 2016? I believe. Uh, just, uh, he says it sounds right. fine. Yeah. <laughs> and his wow. first PWI ranks him as one of the all-time greats in basically everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I am exhausted. This is Stan the Lariat Hansen. Wow, man. Unbelievable. I almost went to sleep. You <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it's the meal. It's very heavy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Especially yeah, this time yeah. in the morning. So, Stan, to start it off, <laughs> can you tell the fans why you got into professional wrestling? Well, I... Uh, my dream was to play football, but, uh, you know, I didn't. Uh, I went up a couple of years for Baltimore, back when Baltimore was Baltimore. Baltimore Colts. Colts. And uh, then San Diego and everything. And after that, uh, you know, I didn't. I got cut both times. And uh, I went into teaching for a half a year, starving, making 500 bucks a month. And uh, 
I said, golly, anyway, and I and met Terry Funk, you know, at uh, West Texas State where I went to college and uh, got kind of on the fringe, got to know him and everything, and, and he, he, he was interested in asking if I wanted to get into wrestling, and I was pursuing football at the time. So anyway, I, after I was teaching and realizing how am I going to raise a family and all this other stuff, uh, uh, you know, Terry got a, a hold of me again, and uh, anyway, that he got me into the business, and uh, the rest is history. So I really owe it to Terry Funk, you know, oh. the, and and the Funk family too, of course. Junior was the heavy uh, heavyweight champion at the time. He was traveling the whole time, so I didn't really see him a whole lot. But uh, Terry, I got to know actually, and uh, we're still we're close to this day. Any interest in pro wrestling before the idea was offered? Well, to you? I was, uh, you know, I started going to the the, the matches in college uh, to watch Terry Funk, and, you know, because uh, he he played at West Texas and Dory junior played at west texas so that it was a there was a history there and uh the football program there at west texas was really a a, a really a great great program for a small d1 school you know and uh it, it was uh it was good and so anyway that's my interest got into wrestling by just kind of knowing that terry funk and you know the funks are part of that business and was the training process smooth for you as you were learning <laughs> learning how to uh you know take the bumps and throw the blows how did that go for well you? you know there wasn't no training man i mean actually i guess they uh right they the got fire, me together huh? and they hit me with a couple of forms and you know and <laughs> okay. uh, you know told me how to grab a headlock and uh after that i i got in the ring with some uh at the show I mean, I, there was no training other than that. And then I got in and I just kept my ears open. And luckily I was around. Uh, there was a number of really great talent in the Amarillo Territory at that time. I mean, just top talent. They could be in the main event one day and then they could be working mm-hmm. with some opening guy mm-hmm. like me, you know, the next day. But Carl Von Steiger and Moose Morowski, those two guys from Winnipeg, Canada, but they, they were in the Amarillo Territory. They were instrumental in really teaching me a lot, you know, in the ring, in front of the people, you know. So it was uh, it was learning as I went. How does Vince Sr. become aware of you, and how do you wind up in the WWF? Uh, well, you're jumping way ahead. But, okay. uh, you know, anyway, I worked two or three years there, and... Uh, Oh, you can take us through the in-between. Okay. Uh, anyway, I mean, basically, I've worked in a number of territories uh, and uh, everything. But Besides uh, Texas, wh- where else? Before well, you, before I had the Louisiana got... Territory, okay. and I went to Florida, you know, the, mm-hmm. the very first year for about six months. And then uh, back to Amarillo, and, and I got I hurt, hurt my knee, and, you know, then I was out a little while, and then I came back. <clears throat> and uh, I went to Dallas Territory. And there I met uh, Red Bastien, was the booker, and uh, a guy named Mike Pedusis from Steubenville, Ohio. He was good friends with Bruno. He Ooh. saw me wrestling. And he was basically retired, but uh, he lived in Dallas, and he saw me. And uh, I guess he went and talked to Bruno, and Bruno gave me a call and everything. And then uh, I guess he talked to Vince, and... And that's how I got into New York. Did, but, you, did you enjoy your time in the territories? And uh, how would you compare the territories to when you got to the bigger levels later? Did you uh, enjoy the territory days? You know, a territory's a territory. You know, whether, uh, I mean, the, you know, you got the great venues like Madison Square Garden and mm-hmm. Boston Gardens and the old Spectrum. And, uh, you know, so here in the WWF days, you know, it was... Uh, I mean, it was one of the top places you were hoping to get, mainly to work, you know, for for Vince Senior and also work with Bruno because uh, that's one of the top top guys in the whole country, and uh, you know, so everybody's dream was to get to New York, but uh, you know, the NWA was a great ter- uh, you know organization, and there was a lot of different territories there. there you can make some, you know, good money too. You know. Did so, you have a particular favorite one? 
no. territory. Like, Not you know, really. did you prefer going to Georgia over Florida? Did you like Texas well, the most? I enjoyed Georgia. Being home? You know, I enjoyed Georgia. You know, Ole Anderson was the booker. Uh, a lot of people, you know, give him a knock, but uh, he was a smart Smart, one of the better bookers. Look, congrats! Congr- you are You're the, the first, first one, guest. We've been that, hearing a lot of well, stuff. That gives Ole Anderson some props. Okay, nice good. job. Well, you know. Well, I mean, he was. I mean, he was coin. smart, and he was, you know, and he mm-hmm. he booked. He booked two different territories. I mean, he was booking Georgia, and he was booking Charlotte, and uh, you know, I mean, uh, you know, later, you know, George Scott was the booker, at, you know, uh, in, in the beginning there, and he was real successful too. But. Why do you think other wrestlers had a problem with Ole Anderson? Well, because Ole told it like it was, you know, and a lot of guys, you know, they want to hear that you're the greatest and you're doing this, and you know, we're, you know, you're the prima donna. I don't know, Ole, you know, he 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 ribbed really hard, and he ribbed straight. And, uh, you know, so that got him in a lot of trouble. A lot of people couldn't take it. We got along from the beginning because when he started talking about, oh, you, whatever you want to call me, big, fat, dumb Texan or whatever, I said, well, you (laughs) short Polak, you know. You know, know, I mean, I just come back at him, and I think that's how we ended up getting along because I think that's what he was looking for. You know, and uh, little, but anyway, like, he rubbed a lot of a lot of people wrong, and I seen him treat some people wrong. But uh, you know, he treated me right, and uh, I mean, I made more money in, in, in uh, the Georgia territory, and I left at five o'clock in the evening, six days a week. You were off on Sunday, in the beginning, and uh, you know, I made more money than uh, half the people in the Charlotte Territory, which was the big place. Well, yeah, it's, it seems to me, right, you're, you're just a businessman. Pay me, pay me what I want, yeah, right. and do whatever you want. Right. I could care less. Just yeah, give I me some money. It. I mean, you know, I was in it to try to make money. You know, sure. I mean, that was my way to try to make money. Finally. And, yeah. And Finally, sure. someone's saying it. Thank just you. pay me. Yeah. yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. I'll figure out the rest of my business on its own. <laughs> yeah. uh, Bruno gives you a call. Did you know Bruno before this? No, Did you ever I meet didn't. him? No. So, it's all um, done through Mike Peduces. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I talked you, to Bruno first, and then we we talked on the phone, and evidently he he, he must have called Vince and and uh, put the word in. Did this and, blow your mind a little bit? I mean, Bruno spotted you, basically. Well, I mean, I, maybe I was too naive to think about that, but uh, you know. <laughs> but I mean, I have I have I had a great relationship with Bruno all the way until he passed away. Okay. You know, and we uh, okay. we always touch base couple times a year he liked me i liked him uh you know uh he was a class act man and uh i mean i could talk an hour on bruno you know what a what a great guy but yeah so he you know evidently he and then i worked with him and i hurt him and i broke his neck you Mm. know i slammed him on the back of his head and and uh wow did you get did you get crap from that did a senior was senior pissed at you like you just he didn't say company, but you, you heard Bruno. He was pissed. Mm. He came in. I, I, you know, and I knew that I got it. You know, didn't get him flat or whatever. You know, and, but we went on with the match. And then when he came in, is he came in? Said you heard Bruno. I said, well, well, you know what? I didn't because you know we went the, we went through the match. So anyway, luckily it, it didn't do any. <laughs> Da- Can I damage. ask you this though? Did you get also fall out from the locker room too? Because oh, Bruno yeah. was their paycheck, right? Yeah. And they're all looking like you may have just cost us a lot of money. It's exactly right. That's you know that happened because you know the way they did it. You, uh, I think. I mean, I, I don't know what order, but it was Ivan Koloff, and then uh, Ernie Ladd and Billy Superstar Graham. Those were the three guys that worked with Bruno before me. And they still had other towns, you know, other Washington, oh, Philly, man. all this other stuff. When I come into the garden, and then I heard him, so they're out. I mean, they're at, they don't get to work with Bruno in those towns. It cost them a lot of money, and there was some underlying, uh, you know, uh, heat, but it was very professional. Can you share Ladd, those? Ernie comments? Ladd was cla- you know, class guy. I mean, he, he gave me some great advice and. You know, to this day, I, I took it, and uh, you know, and uh, 
superstar Billy Graham and, and Ivan Koloff. I got to know Ivan really good later too. And, you know, but anyway, it happens. I mean, you know, it sure. happens. I mean, you know, people get hurt in wrestling and they, people get killed and die in wrestling. And, uh, you know, it's, oh, it's the word fate just always, I, I, I can't handle Stan, it. did that affect the way you worked afterwards? Like, were you now, like, really nervous that you might hurt somebody else and kind of pulled back? Yeah, did it change affect your, your character? No, I, I probably went out and tried, went the other way. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I kind of like that. I mean, I, 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 I got kind of like I, that. I've never tried to hurt anybody, right. and I mean, you know, but people get hurt. I mean, I I got my knees tore up. But, you know, yeah. I've, I've had you know fifteen surgeries. You know, so don't you know, it happens, and uh, you know, it just it happened it happened with Bruno, and uh, you know that was a bad deal, and uh, I felt really bad about it. But Bruno was class act. Don't worry about it. Just protect yourself. <laughs> protect myself. So, I mean, I took that for, for granted. And no one tried to take any liberties from you, with you, after those matches? Like, oh, I'm going to make this guy pay for costing me some money or anything like that? And no, not that, I, that I'm that i aware of. No. Plus, nobody, you could have handled yourself anyway, right? Nobody did me in, 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 I used in, in the ring or anything. <laughs> I, nothing. Okay. I, and, I, you know, I was... I mean, it's physical go getting thing and and my if i have a strong point it, there was a lot of guys a lot stronger than me but i had great i could go i could actually go go for a long period stan of time what fast. was more difficult training and working professional wrestling or being on a football field well it's a completely different a di- different deal there's you know the uh, pro football and our college football uh, you know, it's it's a tough sport, but I mean, it's I mean, I think that foundation of, of football carried me forward, and a lot of the guys my generation, from you know Bruiser Brody, uh, uh, the Funks, uh, you know Dusty Rhodes, they were all football players. Bobby Duncan, I mean, all those guys came out of you know Texas football and everything, and they were, I mean, it it made you be able to do good in, in pro wrestling. But I think that foundation of having to get up, keep going, keep going, keep going, I think that was that was my strong point. Hmm. You were a natural heel. Did you ever want to play a face, or were you very well, comfortable? Well, I was. You know, I, I turned, uh, you know, country redneck guy, you know, in, in Georgia there for uh, against Ole and Far Ole and everything, and, and had, had a good run. But... I feel real natural. I I like being the you know, I, you know it's cowboys and Indians, John Wayne, you know movies. You know, growing up, I you know, I I liked I like being the bad guy. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 it I'm, was easy. I'm gonna hit you with a pretty hard question to answer if you want. Uh, you know, you wanted to be a football player, and obviously there's a difference between football and pro wrestling. Back then, pro wrestling certainly had a stigma against it you know if you were a wrestling fan you were kind of in the closet you didn't want anyone to know that you're yeah, a wrestling we used fan. To take heat. you'll sneak to the yeah, garden no. and like not be seeing and you know um was there any point that you, you kind of yeah, obviously you one of the all-time greats but was there any point you were embarrassed of being in the industry no never never you know i uh, <clears throat> i went out and i i went all the way the funks you know i think the terry and them and Dory Senior, you know, they just said, you know, we we expect you. We break very few people in. Uh, you know, we think that you can do good, but you know, you treat this business really good, and and uh, it'll treat you good. And uh, I just took that to heart. And uh, you know, I knew that I was going to get tested, you know, by a lot of these older guys. And I, I'd been through the football camps and realized that the. The veterans had a special place, and then there's rookies, and uh, you know, uh, so it's the same thing in wrestling. I was a rookie in the beginning, and I was all ears, and, and I said, you know what, if if I can make three hundred and fifty dollars a week, 
I can take anything. There you go. <laughs> nice. Because I was making five hundred dollars a month. Teaching. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> teaching I can take pro it. wrestling. Now, is it isn't that <laughs> weird? A teacher, five hundred bucks a month. Pro wrestler, three hundred fifty bucks a week. A little unfair, you think? Yeah, something's <laughs> a little off there. Well, I mean, teaching the future a, a week <laughs> in a month, you know, that was the deal. Yeah, I, like, uh, I did my math. I mean, I got, yeah. I could do the math. Thank goodness. Describe. You know, I Des- said, "Oh my God, deal- that's a thousand dollars a dealing yeah. with with snot nosed kids for five hundred bucks a month, or having fans licking my boots on a daily basis for three fifty a week." I'll take the. I'll take well, that. Right. you know, I was a coach. I enjoyed. Co- I mean, I enjoyed what I was doing, but uh, you know, the bottom line was, how do I? raise a family mm. on five hundred dollars a month yeah and, and so the opportunity to you know besides have you thought about this for a second this so you hear there's a substitute teacher coming in for the day and you know how we used to get excited we're gonna cause problems <laughs> and he walks in yeah, right that's I, funny, I, I quit I'm, I'm out i'm cutting out that class forget uh, that, it that's funny because that was the substitute teachers worst nightmare as a student i mean you find out that we have oh god i just i mean abused i mean literally i should have been kicked out and everything you know throwing pencils at them when they're back oh my god it was horrible and then here i was i ended up being a substitute teacher and of course everything had changed you know 180 how, how did the, how did the Larry uh, hand out discipline to the students I gotta I gotta hear this one I just sent them to the office you're right go to the office missing a limb maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just describe for me Vince that. McMahon senior if you can well he was a you know he was a he was very uh uh he was first class he was a cla- classy dresser he, you know he looked the part he was he was the owner and everything. Uh, I used to call him, and uh, <laughs> because the other superstar and all, uh, you know, call off everybody. They they told me wh- how they, you know, by not. I'm telling you this, but just in the conversation of how they handled their business with Vince, and so here I was coming in, but I was really green. And I've only been working a couple of years, uh, three years, I think. And so I ended up, well, I'm in here as a top guy, and I want to be treated like a top guy. And uh, so that kind of rubbed some people the wrong way because because I didn't have a big old long history. These other guys had all been top guys all around, you know, somewhere else. So, but anyway, so I kind of, I would call Vince up and complain about a. <laughs> Payoff that was should have been two hundred dollars, and I was getting a hundred and fifty. And uh, one time he actually said, "You're calling me up in the you know, late at night, uh-huh. complaining, you know, complaining about fifty dollars." And I said, "Well, fifty dollars, and you multiply that times you know three hundred. You know, that's a lot of money to me, Vince. You know, so you know, he 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 felt." And he rightfully so, uh, probably I, that I didn't appreciate the op- or realize the opportunity. But you know, we're all apples. You know, there's not apples and oranges when you get into the ring. You know, that's the way I see it. That's right. You know, everybody's equal. You know, hundred percent. Do you feel that your size? may have spared you some razzing in the locker room over the year. You're a big, big man. Yeah. You think maybe some of that played in? Like maybe they think twice before they razz this this huge kid? <laughs> you know, I tell you, you know, my generation of guys, and I, I, I don't know about how it is in the locker room now, but when I broke in, every, everybody basically got along. I mean, there really? was very few. Okay. There might have been something behind the scenes, you know, but it was I handled heard and that, it was done. But I'm telling you, professionally, when you go to the ring, ever you know, you were, you know, everybody was on the, you know, you had the, you, you shouldn't try, you shouldn't be hurting people. You, you don't do things, you know, if you hurt people. <laughs> you of course, I hurt Bruno. Way to go, Stan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, but I mean, we all got along. I mean, and, and like I said, you know, Bruno. 
Bruno even told me, he says, you know, I've been hurt two times. You know, both of them from West Texas. Bobby Duncan broke mm. my arm, mm. and you broke my neck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, he was very supportive of you, though. He you know, was. After, and do you think that that helped with, the, with the, the heat that you may or may not have received during the, you know, afterwards? Yeah. I, I, he was very supportive of yeah, you. Yeah, good. Uh, that I'm had sure. to carry weight if with he some of the guys. If he would have been vindictive or if he would have, you know, gone the other way. This could have been bad. I, I, I You know, I've probably been... I mean, I've definitely been out of the territory, you know. Interesting. But, you know, but it, Stan, you were talking about uh, superstar Billy Graham. So at some point, Bob Backlund becomes heavyweight champion. You come yeah. back into the territory. Superstar Graham was not happy. Just then, you know, we've had Larry Zabrisco in here. Larry Larry thought Bob did a, a decent job trying to carry Graham. the company, you know, who could carry after Bruno. Uh, Superstar Graham is clearly wasn't a big fan of Bob's, or just didn't think he had the goods. He didn't and feel he was champion. the drawing power. Well, how, how did you feel about Backlund's ability to draw, especially after Bruno? Did you did you did you see a well, uh, you know a decrease in attendance? Anything that would you know, indicate you know, that Bob I wasn't? Uh, uh, no, I don't. Okay. You know, I knew Bob and I was uh, Bob was in the Amarillo territory as a green boy, also. Mm. And that's where I, I, I met Bob. And, uh, mm. you know, without a doubt, he is, he's probably, without a doubt, he's probably the best athlete that I ever saw in wrestling. Really? Best he, conditioned nice. also, Just right? Conditioned nice. and everything. I mean, he, I mean, he could go. I mean, he 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 was he was he was just a great great it, physical a- athlete. Is it true that senior would pro- put the strap on guys that he knew would be able to handle business if it got real and someone tried no, to mess with the territory? I have no idea. You have to ask somebody. Else. Okay. I, Do, I mean, if, if if Backlund wanted to shoot on you, you guys had a problem. Could you have taken Backlund down, or, no. or would he have stretched you? Why would that happen? Oy, oy, oy. Take down? <laughs> I might take him down if he let me. If he <laughs> let me! Well, there you go. There's the answer right well, you there. Know, growing up during that time period, Bob Backlund, we always took very seriously because of his amateur background. You had to. Yeah. So he was clearly I mean, athletic. he was a great I mean, he is you just know. a great athlete. You he, know? Was. he was. He played... Uh, he, he played football, uh, you know, at North Dakota State, I think, and, uh, you know, he was an uh, amateur wrestler. He was an All-American, uh, you know, in wrestling and All-American in football. I mean, he was just a great athlete. A lot of guys came out of that Minnesota, you know, were good, you know, good athletes. Can you compare Bruno to Backlund for me, if you can? No, I don't think I can. I think they're Very just different, two, obviously. Two different, two different individuals, two different styles, you know, uh, you know, you able to work with both, obviously, with no problem yeah, at all. You know, I mean, I I, I work with Bruno probably. Uh, well, no, I work with them the same way, I I guess. You know, but uh, you know, they were they were two different two different styles. So you know, it was it was just different. But did you did you get butterflies? You were pretty main events, right? He. Oh, you, man. you were in the Shea Stadium, right? Yep. With Bruno, that yep. finisher. Mm-hmm. Of, and then you also had a steel cage match with Backlund in the I garden. I remember that. Yep. A guy, you know, did you get butterflies or was it just business? You were good no, to go. Uh, you know, um, you know, I can say, I, you know, I can't, I can't remember the first time I worked the garden or something like that. You know, my my dad was from Brooklyn. He went to, uh, during World War II. He went to Texas. Met my my mom from Texas, and so he. We only went back a couple of times. In fact, he went back for the first time when I, when I was here in '76. I, I brought him and my mom back. Anyway, uh, so you know, I. What was the question? I got off on something. Did you ever get nervous? Oh, right? so you, you know, came nervous, from the southern nervous areas. Nervous wise, by then I don't think I was nervous. I don't think uh, me hurting Bruno had anything to do with nerves. Some people have insinuated maybe I was too green or something. Well, but I'm kind of saying, I, you know, I'd already. I mean, I'd been in main events and big shows and uh, you know things uh, down in Louisiana and. But uh, Lu- Louisiana crowd, I have to assume, and I could be wrong. Five thousand people at best, and then going into the Garden or Shea Stadium, where you got twenty thousand well, people, Stadium, right? You know that was, uh, you know, that, I mean, but uh, by by that time, I, I mean, I I'd worked the Garden two or three times, and uh, you know, some other uh, big shows and everything. I 
like I said, I, I always I wear glasses. I need glasses, but when I take my glasses off, you know, nothing there. Vision stops here. There's people out there, but there's no eye contact. I can't tell them that. that's a reputation of, in Louisiana. I said, "Guy, you're you're so damn brave." The guy had a big knife out, and he was just he, <laughs> he said, did? "Get out of here! I'm gonna catch you!" And you just jumped right out there in front of him. And I said, "God, I didn't see that." <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, 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 God, I'm knife. glad. Ooh, I wish you out. <laughs> The next week, you got a bodyguard next to you. Let me know if anybody tries to cut me. Oh, my God. And, I mean, that that was the other thing about the South. And, of course, it happened here, too. I mean, there was, you know, a lot of the fans went nuts. But, uh, you know, down in Louisiana, and, I mean, everybody carried a knife. And most Oy. everybody carried a gun. You know? So, I mean, it was – and I carried a gun for a long time. And, you know, just – but I found out that, Oh, that's just going to get you in trouble. So, yeah. You know, yeah Louisiana is a scary place, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I was there two oh, years. Very scary. I mean, let me tell you, you know, the, uh, the arena in Philadelphia is a scary place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's true, too. Kudos. <laughs> yeah. How so, about getting your first taste of Japan? How does that all come in? Because, you know, for the folks at home who are not aware, you are... Uh, you're pretty up there in Japan. You're basically one of their like. If there was a Mount Rushmore in Japan, I think he might be on it. You know, how does this all all come? Well, about? I chose I chose Japan, and I I mean, I can get into the whole story, but the you know the Funks were booking for Baba all Japan, and uh, Anoki was working with Vince, and Vince was sending talent to to Anoki in New Japan, and so I I went with the, the Funks sent me over there the first time for Baba, and, you know, underneath guy, Bobby Jaggers, and uh, uh, Larry Zabisco was on that tour, you know, and Abdullah the Butcher, and uh, Ox Baker, I can still remember, uh, and going there, and, and uh, you know, I had an experience, and I came back, and then I went to New York, and Vince, on the way out, he, he, booked, he booked me to, for New Japan, for a couple of tours uh, uh, with uh, uh, Anoki's group. And uh, of course, I, I was there at, at Shea Stadium when Anoki fought Ali and everything. And uh, the only place that that whole thing drew was in, in the, the WWWF territory. Mm -hmm. and, may, and it was because this was Bruno's return from my, me hurting him, and he came back, and uh, people came to Shea Stadium to see Bruno. That's right. And uh, uh, I had a friend, uh, ex uh, ex wife. She she was uh, she was in the stands, and she said that she couldn't believe, you know, there were people wearing. I mean, um, I mean, just like these fur coats, and I mean, you know, just really dressed. Mm -hmm really rich people and they just sat there through the whole thing but when bruno came out huh. she said i mean people jumped up and they start i mean people were literally crying wow and uh, she said I, i've never ever seen anything like that and, and so that you know they came they came to see bruno come back because i heard him and he was out for two or three four months or in, something right in your opinion was bruno the greatest of all time or would you put hogan above bruno well you know you know bruno i think in this area of bruno you know you know hogan you know reached uh you know a complete you know hit his own great level stratosphere but I, I, i'd say that bruno in the northeast during that time, for sure, was over as anybody. So you were a territory guy, too. So Ric Flair has been known to say that Bruno couldn't draw out of the Northeast. Did you find that to be true? Well, I don't know. You, you know, that I, I don't know that kind of history on Bruno. He never had to go outside. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? that's what I'm okay. thinking. Fair enough. He was happy to live, <laughs> be he home. my line. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Um, what do you think made you so over in Japan? What was it with the fans that they just gravitated to you? What was it, and how hard was well, it? It took, you know, it took it took a long time. I mean, you know, it wasn't something that you just did. You know, I went there, you know, like I said, and worked for New uh, Inoki's group through Vince, and uh, they came to me at the end of the the second, you know, second tour 
that I that Vince had set up, and they asked me, "Are you working for Vince, or are you working for you, or are you what are you going to do?" And I said, "I'm working for myself. I'm not nice. You know, I am. Go. I, I make my own decisions and everything. Uh, Vince booked me in here, and and I appreciate that and everything. But so they were looking. Well, so they were interested in me maybe coming back. He says, well, maybe in about a year or so, we'd like for you to come back if you, you know. I said, okay, good. So I left and I went to Georgia and uh, had a great run there. And then, you know, from there, I ended up, uh, you know, uh, going back and uh, New Japan call me and I went back. Is that the way it works though? So Vince books you over there. I'm sure Vince is getting a substantial piece of the action. I have no idea. Well, I I imagine. And then you're kind of doing business for yourself, which is fair. Does that cause a problem with Vince that he knows you're doing business behind the scenes or does he even care? Well, I think it it, it probably did. uh, And, you know, I I made, looking back, you know, I, I made, you know, I made a few stupid comments and was feeling my oats or whatever you know I I regret now but uh, you know it was just me and my personality I guess trying to establish in my independence so this was later after I I was coming for New Japan and I and they had given me this opportunity and they were pushing me and I was doing really good and then uh, Andre and I got involved over there and Andre was the guy that really got me over in Japan. I mean, I, I say that. I, I owe it all, really, to Andre. Can you share a story about Andre? Uh, <laughs> on the air? Which one? Yeah, <laughs> on the air. I, give absolutely. Us, give the us, one, give the us one the, that you're the, afraid to share? Share. The Stan <laughs> Hansen gem Andre story, if you don't mind. No, no, it's, a, it's only yeah, 40,000 know, he, he, he was, I mean, he was... You know, Andre was probably one of the smarter guys in the business. I, I mean, that's first and foremost. He knew his position and what he needed to to stay involved and and, and be. Because you know, the giant, the Andre the Giant, can go over. He can only work so many three man squats jobs in Japan. He can't work against the Noki, you know, in a one on one match. You know, so he's. He's smart. He sees me getting the push. You know, they're pushing me, and, and I'm getting over. And uh, he was smart enough to say, you know, I said, you know, I need an opponent. I mean, this is all my words. This is not what Andre said. This is just my assum- assumption. But he, he was smart enough to say, you know. And anyway, so they threw us in there, you know, in a, in a tag matches or whatever. And I fought Andre. You know, most people, you know, nobody fought Andre. He just beat the crap out of you and throw it. But I fought him because I was I was in this position and I was trying to, you know, trying to get to this top spot because I knew that the top spot was, you know, a great spot in Japan. Besides, how can you be afraid of a guy you can't even see? <laughs> yeah, well, you were basically like he you know, blocked out the sun. So you know, <laughs> he you blocked kinda, out the yeah. sun. One of the scariest <laughs> sights in the world. Is when you're laying on the mat and Andre's standing you over like this, <laughs> oh my and he's Lord. got a foot on both sides of your chest, and he jumps up and he comes down with his ass. I mean, his, this ass is big, big ass. and it's coming down, man. I tell you, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, were you, you intimidated? Know, but he walk? never hurt me. You know, I mean, I, I mean, you know, no hurt. intimidation whatsoever when you were first approached with the no, idea you of know, fighting. I mean, Andre? the thing is, hey, this is the he, biggest he, man you've ever been in the ring with. He he realized that I was, I mean, I was stupid enough to fight him. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I just kept fighting. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't back off, and I just kept fighting him. Nice. And he was smart. He heard the people, and mm. the people rea- was reacted. So, anyway, so he says, well, here's my opponent. Here's somebody I can come to Japan with and work yeah. with and make. And, and we ended up, it's one of the great matches of all time in Japan, is uh, the match in the tennis stadium. Well, he was so, smart enough to let you get your shots and to keep that program going. Did you ever try to outdrink him? What? <laughs> you what? Couldn't. There's no point in trying. You know? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't ever try to out drink him, but uh, he out drank me a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> he That's could great. drink. That's great. And I seen him drink. And they had like uh, big trash cans with ice, and they had like cases of these big oh. Karen beers. I mean, like two or three cases by his seat 
on the bus and he would drink and then he, he loved uh, crown royal wow. and he used to you know and i but i going to and from i i never saw him drunk or even the least bit out of control or anything you know i mean he he could just handle it i mean he's 450 pounds i mean you know he he could handle it. Stan, did any of the fans back in the day try to test you? Maybe you were at a bar. Maybe you were yeah, hanging out. You know, what? I mean, more at the, you know, I wasn't a bar guy. So, you know, I mean, uh, one uh, Terry Funk gave me some great advice one time. He says, if you ever get into a beef at a bar, you know, and it's settled, you know, or whatever, it's separate, you know. But if you ever get into beef, you know, take a few minutes, leave, go to another bar. Because the guy go out there, sit out in the parking lot, drink two or three more beers or whatever, and then come back in, and you'll have a fight on your hands. So, I mean, that that advice got me out of you know a lot of things. I you know, and I didn't in Japan. I went out to bars because it was just I mean a completely different environment. Never had to worry about ever getting in trouble or getting in a fight. But in the states, I didn't. I didn't really you know. After twelve o'clock, nothing good happens. The traveling to Japan that had to be a drag, right? It was. I mean, it was. Uh, it was. A, it was a drag. But I, you know, I made a great deal. You know, once I started going, you know, and uh, uh, luckily uh, they treated me well going over there. But I mean, they traveled on the bus. You didn't. You know, you you basically had to know what time the bus left in the morning and what time the bus left for the show. And if everything else, you're on your own. So you know, it it was it was a good environment. I liked it. There were long bus rides and so forth and so on, but you know we took the Shinkansen. We, I mean, we did it affect your home life at all, though. I mean, you were gone for a long time. Is the wife like, you know, I'm tired of this. You know, enough's enough. You're in Japan three months straight or whatever yeah. the case. You is. see Andre more than you see me. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty funny. I don't Thank know. You. Uh, you know, my wife. I've been married uh, 35 years. You know, she's Japanese, so you know oh, we, we okay. met over there. Look at you! And uh, you know, we've been married. Check we it got out. A couple of kids. We got a couple of grandkids. There we go. So you know, I mean, it's just the best thing ever happened. I mean, that was that was better than going to Japan. But, uh, there you she, go. I mean, so you know, how, so, how do you I mean, mean? I was going back and forth, but then. When we were back here and I was still going to Japan, I, I did have to be gone for three weeks at a time. And, you know, it was tough, but, uh, you know. Uh, when you met your wife, oh, do you speak Japanese? Skoshi. <laughs> I have no idea. What yeah, that what's Skoshi? Well, that <laughs> is, that something, is that something you eat? <laughs> <laughs> is that yes or no? <laughs> yeah. No habla Japanese. That's another hamburger, please. <laughs> yeah. no, no habla Japanese. No, did your wife speak English? How did that yeah, even well, happen? You know, everybody takes in Japan. They uh, they start taking English in about the fifth grade, and so really? everybody can oh. speak. But they don't. A lot of people don't get an opportunity to, to speak it in conversation, so and, and become fluent in it. But uh, yeah, she you know she she could she can understand a lot, but uh, you know. She basically learned learned English, you know. Now does she have she, does she have a, a Texas twang now since she's oh, been in Texas? A Texas <laughs> yeah, twang. That, that, that's a story. <laughs> Let's hear oh it. She's God. flying back. She's flying back <laughs> from uh, from Japan on on her own. She had been over to see her family or something, and she was coming back. At, so she gets off the plane, and at this time, I was living in Mississippi, which where my older kids were, and uh, we were living there, and, and so she got off the plane and. She says, you know, I was talking, and uh, somebody on the plane, they, they were talking English, and, and we were flying from, from in the Dallas, or uh, from Dallas, Mississippi. They says, and they says, what are you, are you coming? Well, I, I live here. And, and she says, God. And this, somebody told her, he says, God, you speak really good English. But you have a southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, great. So, and she told me that, and I said, "You know what? You want to take pride in that. I mean, that's <laughs> you good. Make it, you that's, know, that's great. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love it." Listen, I want to get this question in because it's been burning in my head for the last few minutes. I have By the way, I told you, the Pharaoh is a huge oh. fan of yours. Oh, my God. And also a huge wrestling fan. Yeah. Oh. Me and Stan kind of bonded a little bit, if you, I could share. Yeah, I caught that. Me and Stan were kind Must of talking about McDonald's. how much, not that we, we're just not huge fans <laughs> of the pro wrestling. Well, I mean, I, I'm a fan. I mean, I am pro 
pro wrestling. Yeah, not I'm pro pro wrestling. I, I got gotcha. you. I don't watch right. any of it. Right. You know, but I mean, I'm a I'm a pro wrestler. I'm proud to be a pro wrestler. Damn straight. But it wasn't you know just it wasn't my it was it was a job right. you know and yeah. it was an opportunity yeah, to make some money that. You know, in life. Yep. Be- before you get this in, because you yeah. can take it from here, because okay. you've got some good pro wrestling questions. But I know you don't watch any products nowadays, but when re- growing up, wrestlers were wrestlers. Like, you're a big guy. I, di- I don't want to feel like I could kick the shit out of a pro wrestler. You know what I'm when saying? You're watching How home. do you feel about everybody now being a pro wrestler? 120 pounds, 130 pounds, 180 pounds. Back in the day, that wouldn't. I can hold the world heavyweight title now. Look at me. What are we talking here? Yeah, you know, I, this is I, not good. Know, like I, said, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, okay. I don't. I don't keep up with. Uh, you know, I know that there's uh, the WWE, and uh, through my going uh, to the Hall of Fame thing two or three years ago, whenever it was, uh, and I got to see and meet some of those guys, and uh, you know, you end up. Well, you got you got some what? indie shows you got I mean, today. Yeah, and, but you know the thing is, there's great talent in the WWE. Mm-hmm. I mean, talent is talent, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I'm not saying that my talent was bigger or, or better, but it, it it was just a different type, a different well, style, and everything. Approach. But there's great. Talent I'm gonna out I'm there. gonna I'm gonna say it for you. Your you talent know. was better. You're gonna go to an indie yeah. show today yeah. coming up. Take yeah. your glasses off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, then I won't be able to see anything. Yeah, you, exactly, that's the point. <laughs> you'll, oh, <laughs> yeah. You'll live, you'll live, long, you'll live that's longer. That's good. You had me going the other way. Yeah. <laughs> no, you'll live longer. You'll digest your meals better. Yeah, you yeah, take your glasses that's off funny. when you go. Yeah, it's it's yeah. rough. But let me. I gotta ask you this because you said earlier, I've thought about your WWE career, WWF, WWF career, and I always felt that you you left there early. And there were many more years of your career, and you said earlier that you know you were you were feeling your oats, you were growing into the business. You know, did you cut your career short with Vince to do other things and maybe regret that a little bit? I'm just curious because there was so many more years you had after the Backlund stuff. You could have come back and maybe won the belt. Did you ever think about? Uh, it? I, I, just know, curious. I mean, it's just like that. Uh, get off on another. I never. Never ever thought about or you know that I would be the champion. Okay. You know? I mean, I wasn't. I mean, I wanted to chase the champion, whatever territory it was. I didn't want to be the champion. Did I you wanted. ever want to come back to the federation? Well, I mean, you know, in the same thing. I, I missed never, you. I never thought <laughs> that I would be the, the world champion. Right. You know, well, the, the, but Vern, the okay. WWF or okay. the AWA. Well, Vern I never gave even, it to you. <laughs> never, never, <laughs> ever even thought about. So you like? What do you like, Vern? Please keep the no, belt. I, I don't want I didn't it. Say that. But you but I world. said it was a big, huge surprise. Well, world but, championship material, though. I mean, to the fan, it was obvious. Well, uh, but anyway, getting back to the WWF and, and the, you know, why why I left was Bruno gave me some great advice. Uh oh. He says, don't stick around and let everybody beat you on the ah, way out. Good he advice. He says, when you get finished with me, Kept that value out. up. Yeah. And you know okay. what? I take, I take those guys. I mean, I took what he Junior said. Junior ever try to bring you back after you left? You know what? In Japan, when I worked with Hogan in the Tokyo Dome, mm. and that was a thrown-together match because... <laughs> nice throw-together. Something wrong with the... Terry Gordy was had some problems or something. It was a joint show and all this stuff. And so, anyway, there's a backstory to the whole thing, but there's just not enough time. But, you know, it's just... Anyway, I went over there and, uh, you know, worked with Hogan, saved the show, you know, because uh, they, they weren't selling any tickets and anyway. And then wow. all of a sudden... They announced it with me against Hogan, and I guess they did like 20,000 20, people in, in like a couple of days. Well, that's something. that's how you get into No Holds Barred, right? Because the, you, you, you well, did a great I mean, job, yeah, and they're like, come on. And by the way, his favorite great, movie. Act, great acting his, job, and you his were his incredible. Movie. You were fantastic. I want to send him to that. a shrink. It's his favorite movie. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Stan's yeah. ripping that. I wish I'd, He's uh, a ripping that one. I wish I could have... Uh, 
you know, it, it pursued that a, a little bit more. Not uh, well, like maybe a soap kind of, opera, like a love interest character of some kind. No, you know? no. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! Yeah. Oh my lord! When does yeah. the loud? You know, let me tell you about <laughs> big, nasty, ugly guys. <laughs> Okay. Is that there's a lot of women that are attracted to them. Oh, I mean, yeah. beautiful women. Hell yeah! And when they yeah. find an ugly guy that they really like, they love him. You know what? I disagree. Oh I can't seem to hook up with anybody. He's having a rough and time. And I'm a big fat it's ugly just, guy. It's just the dry. It's just the dry spell. It'll pass. Real Somebody quick, told me that. I don't know if it's Com- true. Compare the major promoters: Vern, Junior, Ooh. Senior. Thoughts on the three? Everybody knows your story with well, Vince. Well, I, I, I want to finish. Uh, okay, you know, uh, sorry about Vince. Go ahead. He he, uh, during that dome show or something like that. You know, I went out and had the match with Hogan and everything, and uh, you know, so he says, you know, when you get when you get rid of, you know, when you get ready to give Japan up, give me a call. Oh, okay. Bring you in, but I never. Gave really? up Japan, and Japan just kept going. So there you go. Never did, but he, you know, that was a nice gesture on his part. Sure, I appreciate that. Mm, okay. Sure. So the differences between uh, Vern Junior Senior, business wise, any thoughts you mean on that? Vern? Did you say Vern Junior yeah. and, and well, and Vince you know, Junior, Vern. Vince Senior, Vern? You want to throw Crockett in there? Throw Crockett in there. Sure. Why not? Well, I different philosophies. I your take on? Uh, I wasn't involved. Uh, I never had much to do with Crockett. Uh, That's right. You went at WCW. Gotcha. You right. know, I wasn't. And, uh, you know, Vince Vince Jr. was, you know, basically just running. He had two or three towns, New Haven and, I don't know, some other other towns that he promoted. But Vince Sr. was the, the main guy when I was here. When, when I uh, – and I think both times. In 81, too, Vince, Vince Sr. was still there because – the Japan people flew me into New York, and we met with uh, you know the the McMahons, and and they made, uh, you know the Japanese people made you know some conditions on how I was to be treated and come to and everything. And I I told the Japanese people you know basically you know nothing in the middle of the ring, no job, and I said well they'll never accept it you know they they just they won't do that. Well, we had this meeting and everything, and they accepted it. I'm in <laughs> shock, right? So that was the second Shea Stadium where uh, Zabisco and, and Bruno were working, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, you know, I don't, I don't know any, anything else. So I went, I went, went to the show and went right up to Bruno and told him. I said, "Listen, I made some kind of deal here." And, uh, I think I'm going to come in and, and work with you, but uh, the condition is, you know, nothing in the middle of the ring, you know. How does that set with you? And he says, I mean, you know, he paused a second. Really? He's probably thinking, really? Mm. Anyway, and he says, oh, I don't care. I said, okay, that that's all that mattered. If you're okay with it, then I don't care. You yeah. know, so... That that's how it was, and uh, you know, and they they stuck by they stood by that until the very end, and they you know that they you know put pressure on me to do that, and I refused to do it because you know that was a deal's a deal, and uh, but anyway, after that is when Vince he said please come back you know if if I was ready to give Japan up so I appreciated that and uh, I just never ever. N- never came about, but uh, you know, he treated me good, and you know. So tell us about how the a title finally does a world title finally does wind up around your waist, and uh, your good buddy Vern in a particular track. To well, trail. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> Five. Okay. I didn't. Uh, you know, like I said, I was never thinking about getting the belt, and. Uh, you know, if they wanted to use somebody as, a, you know, just to give it from one baby face to another, you know, that I'm not the guy, you know. And, uh, you know, I wanted to make money, you know. I mean, golly, you get a chance to be, you know, the main event, the world champion and at Chicago, Minneapolis, you know, Oakland. I mean, you know, God, I, I mean, I, could, I, could, I can make a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know. 
and I never made no money. They promoted me against, uh, you know, a bunch of job guys, you know, five months into it. I'm the champion. Five months in. You know, or, or I don't know, you know, the exact date, but Slow a, boat. a number of years. Right. Uh, I mean, months. Right. And they're still giving me squash jobs. And I said, well, give me Kurt Henning. Right. You know, give me, uh-huh. you know, I can go out and have a match and, and, you know, tear the house down with a great baby face like that, you know. And, oh, no, you know, our forte is, is the television. <laughs> so anyway, it, it, you know, so here I am, and then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, they come up, you know, I want you to drop it to Nick. No. Bockwinkle. Yeah. And and I respected Nick. I sure. mean, I like Nick. Sure. And I have nothing negative to say about Nick, but he's Vern's guy, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, uh, and Vern, you know, but, and, you know, <laughs> Nick told me a number of times. He said, "I, t- I, t- I told Vern. I told him, don't spring it on. Don't, don't spring something like this on. Stand out of the blue. You know, he's not gonna react." Do you regret trashing the title and running it over? And well, no, tell, it tell the tell you the fans know, what I mean, happened you know. there for those who aren't aware. Look, Vern wanted the belt returned. Obviously, you took yes. it with you to Japan, correct? Which you took I the, did. You I took the belt with you to I Japan. Mean, I was going to Japan. Good for you. Okay. I, I was going to Japan. So he uh, wants it back in the, the mail? Champion. Is that the story? He as wants the belt back in the mail, and you decide to uh, tell us tell us what you did Well, there. I mean, they, they sent some <laughs> some kind of nasty legal letter saying oh, that they own the oh, belt. And, really, now? And they did. And I mean, you okay. know, in the back of my mind, I knew that I couldn't just keep on with the belt. Okay. But uh, anyway, when it came, it, uh, you know, it... It was damaged when it got that back though. Might have had a few mud tracks on it. <laughs> did, did Vern yeah, yeah. did Vern call you and be like, "Was it?" Angry? No, I never talked to Vern. Uh, actually, it was Jerry Blackwell stopped me. We just happened to be on two eighty five Circle of Atlanta, <laughs> and we pulled up beside each other. I had no idea he was there. He had no idea I was there. I was there with my family, and uh, we pulled over to the side of the road and. Uh, you know, he said, you know, Vern wants the belt back and all this stuff <laughs> and everything. And I said, well, I don't know. I don't I don't know about giving him back, Jerry, you know. You know I don't know. And so after that, it wasn't long after that when the, the big letter came and everything. So anyway, uh, I sent it back. And it was theirs. Yeah. And you know what? They had already made a new one. Right. Oh. They had already made a new one that they, they, they had that already gave it. Trickery. They had already gave it to yeah. Nick, you know, the new belt, not the old big old piece of shit belt that they, you know that it was, you know, made in some prison or something. It was pretty gaudy. I mean, yeah. it was this big. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, it was pretty big. Basically, yeah. it was made at some prison in, in, in the thing. That's what I heard. Really? Yeah, but, oh my but lord! That said, I respected the belt as as, as the champion. I'm not trying to belittle it. You know, <laughs> that's great. Everybody, you know, but I mean, but it was a gawky looking belt, <laughs> and they had an already had another one already made for you know for Nick for Nick. So, right, you know, good so for them. You're in New York. Can you? I've uh, got about two minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. You have a. I heard you might have a subway story. Uh, most recently, no. could you share that with the well, fans? I don't know about recently, but uh, back in uh, '76, I'm coming in from New Haven. I, I lived in New Haven. I was driving the uh, the subway in to do some kind of interview and I got my cowboy hat and bleach blonde hair. I'm sitting, sitting in the thing and, and on the subway, uh, well, the train, train's going, mm-hmm. coming into New York and I see this old, uh, uh, old guy with the little, you know, goatee and nice dressed to the, you know, really nice suit and everything. And he has a cane and he's sitting there and he's looking at me and I go, uh, you know, you can always tell when somebody's looking, you know, you make eye contact and they're looking. So, you know, so I don't say, oh, yeah, okay, this guy's recognized me or whatever and everything. So, so he stops. I'm still on the train. He gets up and he takes a step towards the door, you know, and he turns back and he's got this little, little cane and he goes, Bam! man, he hit me hard, oh, you know, with the cane. <laughs> You son of a bitch! You a broke a Bruno's neck, and he hit me about three times, you know, with his cane. And I'm going, 
Boy, they, you know, I mean, I mean, the guy's mean, 80 mean years man. old. You know, I mean, he's an old man. You know, that's great. And all these people are looking at me. He said, "God, what did he do to him? What did you do? Know? Know? Off the train." And that was it. But was you sore. did nothing to him. You did it to Bruno. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. Lord. Well, you know, I want to thank you for uh, joining Monty Nefaro so, today. And uh, do you guys have anything to promote coming up uh, the uh, rest of the weekend? Oh, yeah. We'll be at the uh, House of Glory show tonight. House of Glory. Uh, Where's that at? Uh, it's in Queens at the NCY Arena. NCY Arena in Queens. Yep. Okay. And then we'll be at the uh, CCW uh Pro uh, CZW uh, uh, Russell Pro Show tonight. Okay. And then Mark down at uh, Meadowlands. Mark out of Meadowlands. That's uh, Nick's promotion. He's actually taking a shot at it. So hopefully you guys do well tonight. Again, thank you for gracing us with your appearance here on our little radio show here, our broadcast. And, uh, the bad thing is you get an old man to start talking, you can't get him to shut <laughs> Man, I loved every minute of it. I loved Works every minute of it. That's all right. It. Works for all right, so once again, thank you for joining Monty DeFaro. We're coming back in about five minutes with uh, superstar manager J.J. Dillon of the Four Horsemen. So uh, we'll see you in about five, Faro. Later. <laughs>